Welcome to another episode of Talking Ball with Pat Leonard, a special guest today. We've been trying to make this work for a while. Honestly, it's on me. Finally, here he comes, Jeremy Fowler, ESPN senior NFL reporter, Sports Center insider. He's at J Fowler ESPN. And Fowler, I just have to thank you on behalf of the entire NFL world right now for producing this top 10 series by position yeah. around the league in the month of July, because not only is it great work and great content, but it gives us something to dive into and talk about during really the only dead period. So kudos to you. That's what, hey, July is when I shine. When, when the rest of the NFL sleeps, that's when I get my reps. You know, I get, uh, get some TV work in, get, get some, some programming for you, some content, you know, um, 11 days of content, 11 positions, <laughs> top 10 rankings, a lot of phone calls. So I'm glad it's over with. No, it's awesome. Yeah. So for, for those of you who are not familiar, I'm sure you are, but Jeremy and ESPN, they serve, surveyed league executives, coaches, scouts to rank top 10 players at those 11 different positions. And then Fowler's doing follow-up phone calls uh, to break ties and everything. So it really is, and I've talked to people around the league as I've been reading them, Fowler, and it's really, I think in a lot of people's minds, a very poignant and accurate depiction of where these players fall and maybe even where they are one year to the next. So yeah. great work. And, you know, the... Um, if there's one consistent element about all the guests who I try to bring on the show, it's people whose work ethic I respect. And so, um, you know, you and I obviously brush shoulders a lot at these NFL owners meetings yeah. and league events and teams, and um, you grind as much as anybody. So I do respect that. Thanks, all right. Man. I appreciate, the yeah. kind of words. I appreciate your hustle, man. You're always out there hustling. So you got it. You got it. All right. So talking ball with Pat Leonard is brought to you by the boom Chaga mushroom, super drink, a natural extract loaded with anti-inflammatory immune boosting, antioxidants and heart healthy compounds. You can easily pour this natural liquid supplement into any of your favorite drinks. I put mine in my coffee every morning and immediately feel the difference. I personally have felt a post workout like energy boost with boom. If I ever get foul to play me in one-on-one, -on -one, I will probably take a pack right before <laughs> we play. Chaga also has the ability to lower cholesterol, reduce inflammation, and improve immune and heart health with its beta glutens and antioxidants. Go to boomchaga.com today to place your first order. And if you use the discount code TALKINGBALL25 or use the QR code that you see on your screen, you get 25% off your first subscribe and save order. Right now, that means a monthly supply costs you only $30. Start the feeling, uh, start feeling the difference today at boomchaga.com. And also brought to you by Bet Online your number one source for your sports betting needs this season from baseball, golf, soccer, all the way up to top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online, the game starts here. I, I hear those texts, those sources coming in right now. Fowler, like I said, on the grind. But I have to start because I'm reading these top 10 rankings, and I was excited when the quarterback one came out. Yeah. And I have to admit, I was stunned to see Dak Prescott all the way down at number 10 mm -hmm. in the positional rankings for quarterbacks. Could you explain to me how he ended up at 10 from all the sources and the and the votes that you tallied and the phone calls you made? Why Dak Prescott? who led the NFL in touchdown passes last year, ends up all the way down at 10. Yeah, so it's pretty clear to me why a lot of evaluators around the league consider him very good and a top 10 quarterback. They don't necessarily consider him a top five quarterback. Like when I call all these res uh, results, you know, if somebody sends me their top 10, I take every vote I get and I put it into a composite ranking. Mm. So top three votes, top five votes really help your average. And he just, he gets a lot of eight, nine and 10 votes. He doesn't get a lot of top five votes, if at all. So hmm. that, that's been the issue with Dak. He's what's, I guess teams are trying to reconcile two things. He's playing the quarterback position at a really high level. He's really doing everything you ask and he's maximizing what he can do, but then he's not getting over the hump. So you're trying to figure out why. I, I know a lot of people around the league are, are trying to solve that equation and the only results they can come up with are that you know he's maybe not that high-end athlete high-end passer that say i'm a Holmes or a josh allen or a stafford is where you can carry a team a little bit more in a big game uh, right. and then he, he probably needs some support around him not a system quarterback necessarily uh, but he needs a good defense and run support and some of those things 
these are just some answers I get back. So yeah, um, you get a lot of the same stuff with Brock Purdy, but he's probably considered even more of a system quarterback than Dak is. So I think when evaluators are looking at this, they're they're almost picking from uh, a, a group of athletes on the playground in middle school, right? Like who's the best kickball player, or you know, like mm-hmm. who's the best right now? And so if you're you're going to take a guy like a Justin Herbert, even though the stats aren't as good, the winning isn't as good, you probably take him over Dak because of all you can do with them and the high-end traits that you're sort of projecting will get it done. That, that's why Jim Harbaugh wanted to take the Chargers job is because there's one reason, it's Justin Herbert. So, hmm. you know, you, you don't always have those uh, high-end traits of certain guys. I think Dak has them more than most, but not at that top level of some others. I think your explanation too of the fact that he just didn't get enough, let's say top four, top yeah. five votes to vault him in the rankings. That makes a lot of sense to me because he's not in that group, even if you feel like he's just outside of it. I guess I was surprised. I can understand why someone would take Goff over him. Obviously, he was a number one overall pick. Yeah. But the, you know, I you know, the Rogers one surprised me. Obviously, that's reputation yeah. based and kind of upside. Um, clearly, though, people still he scares people to death if he's healthy and on the field. Yeah. Um but I just, I can't get it out of my head last year. Like, you know, and I'm not arguing with you, but I've just, as I was reading it, I was, and I was looking up some of these stats to confirm kind of how I felt about Dak. And maybe I'm used to seeing worse quarterback play more consistently in person, but you know, there was a stretch last year where he went seven and one in eight games and threw 23 touchdowns yeah. to two interceptions. <laughs> um, yeah. He had a four to one touchdown to interception ratio which only was bettered by C.J. Stroud, who, by the way, did not know the stat. The 4.6 Stroud touchdown to interception ratio led yeah. the league. That had my jaw on the floor. That was a great stat as well. And Dak Prescott and Patrick Mahomes are the only quarterbacks to throw 36 touchdown passes in a season in the past two years in the entire yeah. NFL. So for me, awesome. yeah, it, for me, it makes me want to – you know, reach out to all the people who don't rack, rank him higher and say, what are you looking for? But I, you know, I do, I do see like, you know, you lose to the Niners, you lose to the Bills, you lose to the Dolphins, you lose to the Packers, right? Like in those moments where yeah. let's say it's up to him and only him to take yeah. them to that next level, he does not. Right. And what's unfair about that is you look at that playoff game, the defense was terrible. So it's like, that's not on him. <laughs> Right. And that's sort of the issue. There is a recency playoff bias, probably where Jared Goff got it done in a couple of games and almost knocked off the 49ers. So he probably gets a boost. Um, But on the same level, I think Goff's been so sneaky good. He's second in passing yards and second in touchdown to interception ratio the last two years combined. So he's been Mm. excellent the last two years. The Mm. knock on him used to be he can't deliver in the pocket when there's pressure. Well, now he can. So he's addressed some things. He's kind of overcome his deficiencies or yeah. maybe the argument at least would be the deck hasn't quite done that to that level. Um, the deficiency still is like, you're talking about those big games. Is he getting it done? Um, and I hate to simplify it to that cause that's just an easy talking point. But last year there's really no other complaint. I mean, he, he played the position at a very high level pre-snap post-snap uh, decision-making, you know, he yeah. vowed to cut down on his interceptions after that bad year. And he did in a major way, new system, Mike McCarthy system going on from Kellen Moore, uh, you couldn't have asked more. So I thought he was going to be a little higher. I thought maybe eight or nine. I I didn't necessarily think just doing this exercise for six years now, he's never gotten that bump uh, up there to the top five. Yeah. It's so, it's so interesting. I know he's so polarizing, but yeah, like they put more on his plate last year, worse running game. um, And, and yeah, he even uses his legs strategically well when he needs to. Um, I also liked how high Matt Stafford was on this list coming in at number five. I feel like he is like, if there's one player, especially quarterback in the league that is more respected in football and viewed highly as elite that the public doesn't talk about as much. It's him, right? Like that's That's where he's going. Yeah. Cause even when he was bad in Detroit, he was still getting into the top 10 in my exercise, which that's why I like this. Right. Cause you look at, okay, the media can rail on a guy, but the league looks at it differently. And so here's how the league feels about these guys. And so they've always been high on Stafford. Even when he coming out of Georgia, he's throwing a bunch of picks at Georgia. Like you just, he's one of the, he's a dude, right? He's got top five ability. He just does. And so you look at, look at the Rams, right? Like a part of the criteria that I think a lot of scouts look at is, and coaches is like, 
how are you elevating the players around you, right? So Cooper Cup before and after Stafford is a massive difference. <laughs> Puka Nakua comes in, good player, but probably a great player with Stafford. You know what I mean? So he's kind of a kingmaker. So how are you elevating those around you is a big deal. Um, and that, I think that's a big part of the voting. And then, you know, like, can you can you do anything, right? Like Stafford can make any throw. You can put him in any system. You can drop him in anywhere. He's sort of scheme transcendent, you know? So, yeah, he's always been high. We saw that in the trade value we had three years ago with the Rams, and you're seeing it with the Rams results, right? 2022, they were a bad team because he was injured. Yeah. 2023, they were a playoff team because he was healthy, you know? So it's a big, it's a stark difference. No, definitely. So which player, so Dak jumped out to me, which players ranking at, at any of these positions, it could be multiple players, which one and kind of the consensus evaluation around the league when it came back to you surprised you the most? Like which one made you say, yeah. wow, I really thought this guy was going to be higher or I didn't think this guy belonged in the top 10. Oh my goodness. He's fourth, right? Yeah. Quarterback you mean, right? Oh, any position, any position. Oh, wow. Um, it doesn't matter. So quarterback, like Jalen Hurts falling to 13 was a little surprising. Uh, because the the voters didn't really rail on his play, they sort of gave him a pass. Like hmm. he was hurt, his, he had the knee injury that looked worse than it was played out from Philly. Um, he just didn't look right, right? It wasn't moving around the same, no, and then no the doubt. was so static around him that you know he kind of got a pass, but yet it didn't reflect in the voting. They didn't they didn't give him a pass by keeping him in the top ten. I mean, Trevor Lawrence dropped eight spots from eight to sixteen. That's kind of shocking. Um, I think that will come back around. He just, you know, just, he was playing hurt last year too, and probably should have sat down for a month and didn't. Hmm. So those are some surprises. The quarterback who else surprised, um, I know Nick Chubb was still top three, despite a catastrophic injury, right? Still top three running back. I think people didn't know what to do with him. So he's kind of like a legacy pick, you know? He's just mm. so good that they'd put him one or two if he was healthy. So why but not put him three? To that point, though, like there were players at other positions, like Matt Judon, for example, an edge rusher, where he belongs in the top 10, but he was hurt and didn't play much yeah. last year. And so that's probably the only reason he fell out. So it does still speak, I think, to your point. Like, yes, it's the legacy pick, but it also is just that high of an opinion of the player. Yeah. And I listen, I have a lot of, I have a high uh, amount of respect for Brees Hall, but. I would not have guessed he would have ended up. Yeah, that that's overall. that's surprising. That one's surprising. Now I would say, like the top five guys are all very close at running back. Mm -hmm. He just got kind of an edge. He got a, some top three votes from people I didn't think he would, you know. So I, I put him up there, but uh, that one's surprising for sure. But he he's got some sort of he's got some some abilities that like a really unique, I guess, just, you know, he's kind of a glider out there and he's smooth and has the breakaway speed. And like, he can, he can do some things that others can't. So he gets that now, but I would say that was surprising. Brees Hall too. Uh, cornerback is coming out Thursday. Pretty surprising. Like sauce Gardner is more polarizing than I thought. Oh, I thought he would be a slam dunk. He's not. Um, let's see. I would say from a giant receiver, Cooper cup, polarizing more. I, he, I would say polarizing, but more just, he was a surefire top five guy, top three guy for a few years. He's not anymore. You know, there's just stuff like that. It's kind of surprising. Huh? Yeah, no, that is interesting. I know from a giant perspective, Andrew Thomas being eight, of course, as you pointed out, it's probably just because of the injury and that he didn't play much. Yeah. Um, I did notice that he got, a, he got a top, at least one first place vote. And yeah. um, I thought it was very interesting and telling to see, uh, I think it was an AFC executive or a scout saying that they feel like once Trent Williams is gone and it, this kind of resets, Thomas could end up actually being number one. Yeah. Like consensus league wide, like that he has that ability. He does. He's just, he had the pesky hamstring issue, right? Just kind of been mm -hmm. in and out of the lineup a little bit, but when he's out there, he's, he's a really, I guess they call him a clean player, right? He was a clean prospect. He's now a clean yeah. player. Doesn't make a ton of mistakes and they're just really smooth out there. Um, so yeah, like, Offensive tackle, you got Trent Williams kind of still dominating, but he's 35 now, so I don't know how long that can go. So it's going to be it's going to be Andrew Thomas, Tristan Wirfs, Penny Sewell, some of those guys, the young guys at the top. That that was that whole draft class from <laughs> what was it five years ago now? No, four years ago. Four, yeah. I mean, think about the swing there because you got Wirfs panned out big time, Andrew Thomas panned out big time, Mackay Becton, you know, had some issues, injuries, you know, had to go on a one year deal somewhere, so. Yeah. It's just funny how that all works out. 
No, definitely. Everybody thinks they know at the time, but nobody truly does, right? Yeah. Um, going back to running back, so Saquon Barkley, obviously a huge topic yeah. here in New York. And as you and I sit here, Hard Knocks episode three upcoming later this evening. And my understanding is going to be some interesting Saquon Barkley developments in this one. But he comes in at number four in these rankings. My question for you is not so much about the ranking. I expected him to be around there, top five. I'm wondering what you think this offense is going to look like with Saquon because yeah. I feel like Kellen Moore is a guy who, while he's had some offensive success, maybe that's going to be a little bit more shotgun and Saquon's more of like a downhill, let's put the quarterback under center and give him a runway type running yeah. back. So I'm wondering whether you think this is going to work as optimally as the Eagles are hoping it will. Well, going back to what we talked about Jalen Hurts a little bit ago, I think Hurts' dual threat ability when he's healthy makes Saquon that much more dangerous. I think they're going to get creative with that, even if it is out of shotgun. Um, mm-hmm. You're going to see him used a little more uniquely. I think the he'll be used in a way that uh, is indicative of the skills around him, right? Like Eagles are loaded on offense. That was so, What was so disappointing about last year is that they have all pros or pro bowlers all over the field at every position, and they weren't getting it done. The flip side of that is now Saquon goes into a situation where he's never had a supporting cast like this. And so that's why I think, and I've talked to some scouts about this, who sort of agree, maybe not to the full extent, but that he could have a Christian McCaffrey to San Francisco type impact when McCaffrey was traded to San Fran. Like, really? I don't know about that that extent or level, because that's Kyle Shanahan and that's the 49ers and they're, they're doing their thing. But uh, he's going to shine in a new way, I think, you know, and maybe age will kept up, catch up to him or the carries will catch up to him. But he's just never had that around him and they're going to be able to use him a lot probably more in the passing game than before, I would guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they can use him downhill. I, I think he'll be utilized all over. It just depends on how much Kellen Moore will dedicate to the run. You know, last yeah. year the Eagles were still at their best when DeAndre Swift was running the ball behind that offensive line. So you got to find a way to do that. But Kellen Moore hasn't always shown he's willing to do that, you know. So that's where I'm curious how they marry the two. Oh, couldn't agree more. That was an excellent breakdown. I, I think, you know, and the obvious of Kelsey not being there at center, plus an offensive coordinator who, like to your point, if Kyle Shanahan were running this offense, I would 100% sign up for Saquon Barkley going full Christian McCaffrey this season. Yeah. Not saying it can't happen with Nick Sirianni and Kellen Moore running it, but it's more of an unknown versus, oh, I know exactly how they're going to deploy him and also optimize yeah. right his usage down in and down out. So yeah. it feels He's, like a, I think durability is his biggest thing, right? Like he just hasn't yeah. been durable. Even last year, that the stories I heard about that ankle injury were probably worse than a lot of fans thought. Like, I think it was every week he was trying to grind it out, you know, like it's just, and then he's had the injuries in the past. That's the main thing, you know, and that was the thing with McCaffrey too. He couldn't stay healthy. So I think if Saquon can, when he puts together bodies of work and he's healthy for 17 or 16, he's really, really good. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that point up that you had in your story where league sources were telling you the not only was the ankle much worse than people realized, but that many of those weeks, it was a struggle for Saquon just to get to game day. Yeah. But that was really good context there for fans about what he was last year and what he was playing through. Also, like this is a little bit of a tangent, but it connects to something that I've noticed lately watching this Hard Knock series. And I know they don't show us everything. It's interesting to me that, at least from what we've seen, there hasn't been more conversation internally going back to the spring about what he did for them this year. And what I mean by that is when the wheels were coming off, he was standing there saying the right things, being a leader, keeping the locker room together and playing through that injury. Now, obviously there were yeah. selfish motivations for doing all those things as well. Yeah. Um, but it just fascinates me that it really ended up coming down to that hard line business and running back value call at the end, yeah. because it does feel like there are a lot of other factors there to make an argument for, why he was different than just player X. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation, yeah. right? Is that two year process with Saquon? It's like, it, it looks like from the surface and all that I've read and all that you and I know is that last year it came down to a pretty small amount of money that they were fighting over, right? It wasn't like they were $3 million a year apart on, mm. a, on an extension. It's probably more like one, right? Yeah. Um, it was just really a couple guaranteed. Yeah. And it's like, why not get that to the finish line? Right. I, I don't know. It's, that's the debate. And and it, clearly Joe Shane has the value on the position. And so I, I applaud his conviction on it. It's just interesting to me. Like you're in a new place. You're bringing in a lot of your own players now. 
you know, how dedicated are you to re-signing the players that were there when you got there, right? Like, that's a tough call for a new GM. Yeah. Um, but then the balance is like, okay, you got to try to reward your own guys. And if you're a million apart every time and don't do the deal, then that weighs on the locker room, right? So it's, that's really interesting to me. So Andrew Thomas was more of a slam dunk for them, clearly, uh, right. than Saquon was, you know. And I get it, left tackle, cornerstone type guy there. So that's where they prioritize. And, and um, it worked out in an eventual divorce and it's, it's unfortunate a little bit where he, he probably could have been, you know, that sort of marquee 10 year giant and, um, you know, a Jersey that kids will have forever. And it, it, that dream is gone now a little bit. So it's unfortunate, but that, that's the way the business goes. Yeah. It's, it's really fascinating too, because from a perspective of covering the giants every day, as much as you're covering that team and the league, one of the biggest, if not the biggest giant story this season really is about a player who's not on their team anymore. I mean, yeah. you can make an argument that day in and day out, Saquon Barkley's uh, performance and ability to stay healthy and ability to help the, the Eagles or to justify mm -hmm. Joe Shane's strategy is yeah. really one of the primary storylines of the entire year when you talk about this team yeah. in East Rutherford. So it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing, though. We, if we reverse that, Daniel Jones has to be the most important because Joe <laughs> Shane said it himself, right? Why pay a $40 million quarterback to pay a $12 million running back and have that $40 million quarterback hand the ball off to the $12 million running back? So he <laughs> called a shot there with Daniel Jones, who, who hasn't gotten it done. So it's like, and you might know this, but I, I think it was a stat. I looked it up, and I think I put it in my series, but Daniel Jones' numbers with Saquon in the lineup, so oh. different than without him. So right. I, I'm curious, you know, how they marry that. You know, can Malik Neighbors and all the new additions offset the loss of Saquon and Darren Waller, you know? That was something it was something about his efficiency maybe in the red zone being like triple with Saquon than without yeah. him or so, something related to that. Yeah, the um, touchdown interception ratio is like way better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it really is fascinating. Um all right, so switching gears, going league wide, obviously you're covering the entire league, uh senior NFL reporter at ESPN. The Texans as we know stormed onto the scene last year, took the league by surprise. CJ Stroud yeah. obviously a major part of that. Which team do you or are people around the league that you're talking to keeping an eye on to be this year's Texans? Ooh, this year's Texans. I'm going to go Jets. I'm going to go Jets. Although Ooh. people look at the Jets through a different lens. They think uh, that they should be Super Bowl bust because of Aaron Rodgers. But to me, the sensible play for them is to just make the playoffs and be a team that maybe wins a game in the playoffs. Let's start there, right? Um, but doing this series, like the Jets are pretty loaded up. You know, they drafted well. Um, if they don't it, really almost every position, they have at least an honorable mention. They have several guys that are really close. Um, but I think they have four top 10 players and then four or five different guys that are like 12 or 11. Wow. Yeah, so they're, they're loaded up. I mean, it's, they're ready. So like if they don't win 11 games, at least it's a pretty big disappointment, honestly. So it's, Joe Douglas is a really interesting study in general managing. Yeah. Like you miss on a quarterback that high and you miss on the tackle, as you said, in Becton, but then the other players you've added led by obviously Wilson and Gardner, you yeah. know, it, it's so fascinating. Usually it goes one way or another. It's, it's hard mm -hmm. sometimes to find a guy who has these huge whiffs at major positions, keeps his job and lands blue chippers yeah. all over the place. So one marquee this is my theory. If you just have one lights out draft, that will buy you five to six years of the GM position. You just got to have one like like marquee milestone draft. So they had Chris Ballard, Sauce, Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, back to back to back. Like that buys Joe Douglas. That has bought him four years. And, well, I guess they've only been there two, right? Right. But right. that has bought him time. Is my point. Like, oh, for sure. Chris, Chris Ballard with the Colts when they had Quentin Nelson and like I forgot, drawing a blank, but they had a monster draft one year. Yeah. Jack Leonard, all those guys, Jack. and it paid off, and they won some games. And Saints with Marshawn Lattimore and Al Alvin Kamara, like those sneaky, really good drafts. Um, you just need one to at least hang your hat on to sell optimism, and that's what the Jets have. Those those three guys are all marquee players. Uh, like you know, our receiver rankings come out uh, Wednesday. If Garrett Wilson was playing with Joe Burrow for the last two years, you know what I mean? Or oh boy, yeah. Josh Allen, one of these guys, he'd be top five. You know, but he, he's not. He plays with uh, – he's been playing with Zach Wilson. So, it's like I think you're, you know, he's got a chance to, to be that big-time, you know, 1,400-yard guy. No, that's a great point. I was I was just talking to someone the other day about how it's like – people know it, but 
the Jets offense was so bad last year. It, it People almost discount that their defense, you know, easily three weeks into this coming season, everyone could be like, this is by far the best defense in the league. And people knew yeah. it was really good last year. You too. You're just, you argue you're, that. Yeah. You're just not winning games. So it doesn't matter, yeah. but that's what they were. And that's what they you know, could be again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And from my vantage point, in no particular order, you know, obviously with Burrow coming back, I, I like the Bengals to kind of remind people who they are. The Chargers with Harbaugh on an easier yeah. schedule, I think, are kind of everybody's yeah, pick. That's a good one. And then uh, the last one, this is kind of going out on the ledge a little bit, and I'm not saying this team's going to be really good, but I think the Commanders could be – Yeah. like it, obviously it has to pin on I Daniels, like but I like the Commanders to like, let's say, maybe – either finish second in division or like just get to 500 and, you know, be dangerous. I mean, their offensive line scares me and I think scares yeah. them probably too, but. Um, they remind me of Houston last year, save the offensive line. Like the offensive line is the only, that's the issue. Um, you know, Houston had Tunsil and those guys, you know. Uh, but yeah, th there's some resemblance here with the quarterback that could have a monster rookie of the year type performance. Like everything I've heard about him is he's been lights out. You know, I've talked to other scouts in the division that are scared of Jaden Daniels or like not scared in a literal sense, but just no, I get it. concerned of what he could be in a hurry, you know? Right. Um, like his should be good. The defense should be good with, with Dan Quinn. So it's going to be, they're going to be on the upswing for sure. Yeah. Like um, I envision, I was, you already start projecting how the matchups are going to go. So that's yeah. one thing I think people at this time of year don't always do enough of is, let's say you're a fan of the giants or the Eagles, like it's in a vacuum. You watch your team on the field and you get excited about player X, but you have to think about it in terms of who they're going to face. And yeah. when I think of giants, Washington in week two, I think it is, yeah. I could easily see the giants pass rush, you know, even dominating that game, but also will Jaden Daniels tuck and run for 80, <laughs> yeah. right? Because, because he's hard to catch. Right. So a little bit of yeah. the unknown there, but should be fascinating. Um, yeah. Staying on the rookie quarterback point, outside of the Bears, Caleb Williams, which rookie QB do you believe everyone will be raving about at season's end? Could be Daniels, could be somebody else. Hmm. I mean, I, I would probably go Daniels one, but since we already talked about him, I'll go Bo Nix. Bo, Bo Nix action. Okay. Is uh, he is he going to be the guy? Is he getting the? I mean, he's got to win it. He's got to win the job. But I, I just I've heard really good things. Like he he's basically. He's what Sean did. He's shown so far in just a short, small sample size of spring workouts and OTAs and all that. He's proven to be what Sean Payton thought, like the description of what Sean Payton wants in a quarterback and what he thought Bo Nix could be. He's shown that. And in spades. I mean, he's been apparently like he's already shown a small amount of time that operating from the pocket, delivering the ball with in short spaces, you know, in that phone booth where there's a bunch of pressure around him and bodies flying around. He's been really accurate. Um, Interesting. And just, you know, the 61, the 61 college starts, I think will show up year one, just, just from a maturity standpoint, I don't know if he's going to put up big numbers or not, but I just think he'll be, I'm guessing he'll win the job. And, and I think he'll be impressive when he does it, you know, somewhat he'll stand out somewhat. Whereas, you know, JJ McCarthy looks like Sam Darnold. They're going to give him a run in Minnesota. Atlanta's going to give Kirk Cousins clearly a run in Atlanta. And then, uh, I know I'm forgetting who's the, who's the third quarterback taken. I should know Jake this. may Drake may. Right. So my sense is, is that Jacoby will get the early crack at it. And then it depends on if they win or not. If they lose in a hurry, then it'll be Drake. That's just my guess. My educated yeah. guess right now. I, like they know Drake needs a little time um, to work out some kinks. So and, and look, he might the, the next month in camp, he might just light it up, you know, and change that. But I, my sense is Jacoby will hold on to it for a little bit. I like the Bo Nix call. I'm going to go out on a limb again. I'm going to go with Michael Penix Jr. Yeah. And I don't know why, right? All I know from covering 100 the- 100 million in guarantees for Cousins just to play uh, Michael Penix. <laughs> what I was going to say is if I've learned an, anything while covering the league, it is that highly drafted rookie quarterbacks get on the field. They play. I know. And, you know, and yeah. every year there are situations like this where you say, yeah, he won't, you know, because of this or that. And then they do. And, you know, it, this is probably the path for him here is probably, you know, Cousins getting hurt and being out a couple of weeks or whatever it is. But honestly, even if Penix doesn't play a snap, and I know this is kind of cheating on the question, but I think he'll still be the one who's most talked about at season's end right. because it's either, wow, look at what they drafted. They didn't have to pay Cousins if he plays. And if he doesn't play, 
it'll be more of that same conversation of what the heck were they doing? Yeah. Why did they invest in this guy? Yeah. Um, so that'll That's be cool. interesting. Oh, yeah. He can be the most talked about for sure. Yeah. But it's, it's funny because like Atlanta can try to make the Green Bay comparison, but it's different, right? Because they drafted Rodgers and they drafted Jordan Love, where <laughs> now you have Kirk Cousins parachuting in, who has an Achilles injury, by the way. Uh, I think he'll be fine, and I think he's going to play well and, and all those things, but it's sort of a situation that he's been put in now that he better play well, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's why if you're a player like Cousins. That's why you're a stickler for guaranteed money. Like you have – because teams can do whatever they want to do. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, clearly he didn't know that they were going to draft Michael Penix number eight overall when he signed with them, you know? So it's like he, he's smart, man. Get the $100 million in guarantees, and you're stuck with me for two years regardless of what happens. No doubt. No doubt. Same with like in the, you know, the Daniel Jones situation. It's like, you know, whether you're changing agents, however you're hardlining on a negotiation, the team's going to do what's best for the team when it's time yeah. for them to do it. So you got to, you got to defend yourself as well. Talking yeah. Ball with Pat Leonard is brought to you by Boom Chaga Mushroom Super Drink, natural extract loaded with anti-inflammatory, immune boosting, antioxidants, and heart healthy compounds. You can easily pour this natural liquid supplement into any of your favorite drinks. I put mine in my coffee every morning and immediately feel the difference. Personally, I felt a post-workout like energy boost with Boom. Chaga also has the ability to lower cholesterol, reduce inflammation, improve immune and heart health with its beta glutens and antioxidants. Go to boomchaga.com today to place your first order. Use the discount to code TALKINGBALL25 or access it through the QR code on your screen and you'll get 25% off your first subscribe and save order. Right now, that means a month's supply costs you only $30. Start feeling the difference today at boomchaga.com. A few more, Jeremy, if you don't mind, and then we'll get you out of here. Let's I know your time. Let's do it. Time is valuable. You got All some right, giant guys. stuff for me here. I see you got you got me doing homework here. You got <laughs> second quarterback spot. All right, let's do it. You're not supposed to tell people that I prepped you for this. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be off the cuff. No, I got my kidding. notes here. Yeah. yeah, no, this this is digging into the weeds a little bit. But no, like I said before, too, like. You know, this is what uh, this is one thing I really admire about the work you do is that, you know, I'm on the Giants every day at the NFL and then I'm yeah. our NFL columnist, too. But when you start day in and day out, reaching out to all these teams and trying to stay connected to all 32 or whatever it is, the number of teams that you're really on the inside of, man, is that a grind? Like if you take it's almost one of those things, like if you're plugged into 20 teams, if you take five days off from five of them, you feel like you know nothing yeah. about them. Cause yeah. you're so used to being plugged in, but this is what I love about you. You're all over the league. Yeah. Um, all right. So the giants, they look like a team right now that needs a number two corner and maybe yeah. a safety two. So the recent odds have them as the betting favorite to sign both Xavier and Howard at corner and Justin hmm. Simmons at safety. And the, the betting odds have them in the top three for Stefan Gilmore as well. So, Wondering from your vantage point, do you see any yeah. of these players as real possibilities in New York? Hmm. Um, or is there another corner that comes to mind if you don't see, you know, Howard and Gilmore being the guys? Well, there's another corner that comes to mind. It's an obvious one. Adori? Yeah. He's out there. No job. <laughs> he's unemployed. They could sign him. Uh, I mean, I think he's, I don't think Gilmore is all that likely. I would cross him off. I think he'll end up in Carolina. Eventually, I think that's, you know, he's from there and they want him. They're just sort of, I don't know. I don't think they're financially where they need to be for a player of his caliber yet. So, but, you know, we'll see if they can bridge that gap. But that's my sense is he'll end up there. I, I could be wrong. Um, okay. And then, you know, Xavier Howard, he's, he's had some injuries and then there's some off-field stuff. I don't know about that one. Um, yeah. He can still play, certainly. He's, he's always been, uh, he's always had a nose for the ball. So I could see it maybe. And depending on what the price point is. I mean, Simmons is the one that's most attractive, I would say. You know, he's he's probably gonna cost 10 million, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe Gilmore too. So you got to decide like you want to allocate those kind of resources to a free agent. But I think when teams get into camp and they see that uh, their safeties aren't good enough, you know, that's they start to spend that money. So I, I could see that. I, Simmons, I, I think, would make the most sense. I mean, he he's a culture changer, you know, like mm. um no, I'm not saying he'd be their best walk in and be their best player, but I'm saying like he brings a cachet. Oh, he'd be their best safety. <laughs> oh, for sure. But I'm yeah. saying he he brings yeah. a little cachet that you need. For sure. Yeah. One thing I wonder about guys like this too. I don't know if you have a feel for this with Simmons or not, but I wonder, you know, from the Giants end, they would like to be a team that was attractive destination, but they still are in the mode of trying to prove to a lot of free agents that they're a destination yeah. again. 
And so I wonder if, you know, it's always like when you have these players and like you said, Gilmore, probably not an option, but when these veterans are waiting into camp, usually they're guys who they know they're not getting top dollar and they're also looking to win, like not even, not saying he's at the end of his career, but later in their career. So I wonder, and I don't know if you have a sense with Simmons, like, is he a guy who would want to come to New York to try to change the Giants fortunes or is he in a position of leverage where like he could wait it out and just sign with someone he actually feels is a Super Bowl contender? Pro- probably the latter, but in most cases, the money talks, you know? So yeah, the Giants are willing to put up a good number. I don't know that it would matter all that much for most guys, you know, especially when you've been a marquee. I mean, he's been the best safety in the NFL at one point. So it's like, right. you know, you don't want to take $4 million to sign somewhere. You know, you don't need to. So that mo- it's the money doesn't necessarily matter from a – bank account standpoint it matters from a respect standpoint so um if the giants want to pony up i, I think he would i'm sure he would do it i would think but mm. yeah some of these guys you know quandre Diggs is still out there too do you just wait out a contender you know either a contender or a right. lot of times the familiarity is the tiebreaker you know we saw uh jamal adams signing with different different situation but tennessee tennessee you know he was with denard wilson once upon a time with the jets so it's like that a lot of times bridges the gap. It, like those connections, it's amazing the batting average on those connections a lot of times. You know, <laughs> are signs of the team. You're not kidding. If you want free agency trails, just make the connections. You know, so that, that's typically how it works. No, that's a good point. All right, a couple of rapid fire ones. Uh, to me, another story of the season, regardless of the fact that these guys aren't even in the in the league as head coaches anymore. Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, Mike Vrabel, yeah. all no longer head coaches wondering Oof. at this moment what will each of them be doing yeah. in 2025 in your opinion not, and i'd say i'm not gonna i'm not gonna hold you to it but i probably will yeah i think bill will be back in i do i don't think the coaching pool is going to be overly strong next year they're good candidates of course but uh you know it's they're gonna be some really interesting offensive coordinator names you know like bobby slovak in houston todd munkin in baltimore there'll be some some good names but uh it, there's not, there aren't going to be, and of course, Ben Johnson, if he wants to make that jump, but they're not going to be like 20 names screaming head coach. So hmm. Belichick, I think will be in more of a position of power than he was a year ago. And I think the shock value is still high. Like what just happened in new England and why did it fall apart? And do we really want to give Bill Belichick all this control at his age, you know, but like if Philly opens, it, it's just a perfect fit for me, in my opinion, you know, I, I think he would want that job in the worst way is my sense. Interesting. Um, Rabel in Rabel, like man, he's interesting. That's an interesting one. I don't know what to make of that. Very much, right? He's uh, what consulting he, with the Browns right now. Yeah, I think he's in a mm-hmm. consultant. He'll, he'll get I, if he got a head job, that would not surprise me at all. I mean, he's got the chops for it, great leader. Um, it just depends on whether you want that style. He's got a very specific style. Like one person in Tennessee described it perfectly to me. They said, "When with Mike Rabel, every day is fourth and one," and <laughs> I just found that interesting. Which is that's a good mo- quote. Mostly good, right? Like intensity. We're going to win the day. That's how it was in New England. But some guys need to breathe a little bit, you know. If you're Will Levis, you're probably welcoming Brian Callahan, who's like more laid back, you know. So it's just yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it depends on your style. If there's an owner out there where their job opens. And they want that style, you know. I could certainly see that it's got to be a match. It can't be just Vrabel's yep. a hot man and he's got five job offers. I don't see that. It's got to be the right fit. Clearly, has to be a general. Has to yeah. be a general manager, right? Comfortable, yes. right? Not just the right team to too. Has to be the GM as well. Yeah, Pete Carroll. I don't know. That's you know, that's interesting because they talk about styles, right? It's totally different style. Oh yeah, um, just positivity galore. I don't know. That's a good one because what, what's his What's his age? Do you know of him? That's a, I, that's a I don't, but he's, he's old enough that it, you know, the average person would say, why would he come back to, into coaching? Um, yeah. And I think to come back, it'd have to be like a marquee flagship job. Like he wouldn't just take, um, I don't know, whatever. 72, 72 what, years old. Okay. That's not bad. What, whatever, whatever nondescript job is open every year, like Carolina or what, just to give it an example. Like he would, I would, I don't think he would do that. It would have to be a really good job a flagship job. So I don't know if that one opens for him. We'll see. So going back real quick, going back. So Belichick, you know, the feeling is obviously, and I I think you have may, may have reported this at one point too, during the spring 
about the Cowboys, Giants, and Eagles being like the Belichick kind of jobs he's keeping his eye on. Um, so you feel like the Eagles is the job. If, yeah. Let's say, let's say, just say hypothetically, he had an option for all of those. You would, you would think the Eagles is the one that's most attractive. Eagles in Dallas. Got it. Got it just because, like, look, big names ready to win now, right? Yeah. Philly ready to win. Dallas ready to win. Coaches that know that and have to get it done in a ready to win situation. Nick Sirianni and Mike McCarthy, they're both in that situation. So if one of those opens or both opens, uh, I can certainly see it. You know, the, the Joneses have a long standing relationship with Bill Belichick. You know, I could, I could see it happening. Awesome. Um, two, two quick ones, get you out of here. First, I know you just published the inside linebackers. Bobby Okereke didn't look like he got any votes. Um, you, you know, did that, did that surprise you at all? Or you just feel like that's a, a really strong position there or maybe, maybe he's only bit. done it for one year. Maybe a little bit. Um, I didn't get this. I, I, you would know better than I would. I, I think he played pretty well. The yeah. He had a good season, played hundred percent of the snaps. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, for whatever reason, he doesn't come up. Just not viewed as marquee yet. Interesting. Not viewed as marquee. That's right. Um, I don't and, really have an explanation. I mean, he's on my list that I send out. I just didn't get any votes back. So, yeah, no, Sorry. very interesting. No, an extra, an extra chip on a giant shoulder. Why not? Mm -hmm. um, and so, what's what's your schedule? I'm just curious about what your uh, what your training camp coverage is going to look like because I know you're yeah, so bouncing all over. Yeah, ramping up. Um, just going to kind of lay low this week and then ramps up next week. So I'll go to the West coast. I'm going to start in Denver and do a big circle, Seattle, San Fran. I'm going to fly a lot, which is rough, but then LA has got five teams in the LA backyard this year. So once I get to LA, I can camp out for five or six days, hit a team a day. It's perfect. And then, uh, and then I'll hit Phoenix and then I'll head home. So almost two weeks I'll be on the road. Yeah. So do you, place. do you, Bring your uh, your high tops on the road with you and play pickup. Whenever, <laughs> when I should. Traveling. I might for this trip. That's a good. Well, I see. I, I like to pack light. I hate checking a bag. So, <laughs> You're the sleek businessman, where everyone's like, "Where's his luggage?" That's you. Like in like George Clooney and up in the air. Like I yeah. try to to be that, and then, but it's tough because it's almost two weeks, so I'll have to do laundry, and then, uh, I don't have to pack any suits or anything because. Any live hits I do, I'll be in like an ESPN polo because it's 90 degrees out and they let you do that. Right. So it's good. I can pack light. I can just kind of, you know, have my uniform shirts and put them in the wash every four or five days <laughs> so I can pack light. So the high tops are a problem because you got to find a space for them. I don't know, but it might be it, it might be <laughs> worth it. I need to hit the streets of L.A. play a little bit for sure. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Fowler, uh, a coup coach style lefty, mm -hmm. um, still yeah. looking forward to playing playing against each other or with each other, maybe at the NFL Combine one of these oh, yeah. years. Well, I'm going to come to Giants camp. You're going to have to organize a game. Hey. With Jordan, Jordan Renan and, and the crew. Uh, I bet. Um, oh, yeah. Jo Jordan battling down in the low block. Duggan? Yeah. Does he Dug play? He's tall. Oh, Duggan can play. Du can play. Did, yeah, Duggan, Duggan and you would be guarding each other in like a game of two on two. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, he is Jeremy Fowler, ESPN senior NFL reporter and sports center insider, obviously does great work. Uh, you see him on sports center. You see him on ESPN all over ESPN.com with his series this July top 10 and 11 different positions. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. And just a reminder brought to you here by boom Chaga mushroom, super drink, natural extract loaded with anti-inflammatory immune boosting and antioxidants and heart healthy compounds. Pour that natural liquid supplement into any of your favorite drinks. I put mine in my coffee and you'll immediately feel the difference. I feel a post-workout like energy boost with Boom. Chaga also has the ability to lower the cholesterol, reduce inflammation, and improve immune and heart health with its beta glutens and antioxidants. Go to boomchaga.com today to place your first order. And if you use the discount code TALKINGBALL25 or access it through the QR code on your screen, you'll get 25% off your first subscribe and save order. Right now, that means a month's supply costs you only $30. Start feeling the difference today. Boomchaga.com. Fowler, this has been awesome. Uh, looking forward to do it again sometime. Yeah, and look forward to seeing you in East Rutherford uh, when you swing back through out east. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me, Pat. Thanks, man. Take care.